Hi everybody, it's Brandon. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me in today's skincare vlog. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Australian Gold Botanical Sunscreen SPF 50. This is a sunscreen, a tinted sunscreen, a tinted mineral physical sunscreen that is really popular online. A lot of people say that they love it. There's actually, there is some conflicting reviews on the internet as well. I'm going to be just reviewing what my thoughts, how it works on my skin. My skin is fair as you can see on this video and i'm also going to be going over the ingredients and the research behind the ingredients it's, it's supposed to be infused with antioxidant rich ingredients like red sea algae and, and some other fruit botanical extracts that seem promising, but does the research really hold up? Does it really provide benefits for the skin? But before I get started, if you don't mind hitting the like button down below as well as subscribing, it really helps my channel out a lot and I really appreciate it. So I just wanted to, you know, give you a rundown of why the this sunscreen was attractive to me. First off, it's a mineral only sunscreen. There are no chemical filters in it. It just contains zinc oxide, and titanium dioxide to just sit on your skin, create a barrier, a blocking agent for UV. UV is responsible for 80 up to 90% of the visible signs of aging. It degrades collagen and chews up elastin. So having a sunscreen in your daily routine, like a zinc oxide, zinc oxide is fairly durable. It's at least it's more durable than chemical filters, at least the ones that we have in the United States, like avabenzone for blocking UVA. It doesn't really degrade too quickly in response to UV light like avabenzone. And also it's potentially safer. I mean, there are studies suggesting that chemical filters can seep into the bloodstream and cause adverse effects on the endocrine system. The evidence is not conclusive. So I, I still use like Korean and Japanese sunscreen filters that are chemicals, but I try to use mostly mineral sunscreens. Tinted sunscreens provide a nice color to just sort of reduce that white cast that's associated with uh, mineral sunscreens like zinc oxide is just really pasty. So it's not sort of socially <laughs> ideal, but you know, sometimes I still will rock the, the white cast out in public and not really care, but I try to use mineral sunscreen as much as possible. Mineral sunscreen, tinted mineral sunscreens in particular, you know, they, they provide iron oxides, which provide the pigment color. There's some evidence to suggest that iron oxides can help reduce hyperpigmentation, which is a lot more common in darker skin types in exposure to blue light from, from the sun, visible light from the sun, as well as from our devices, potentially. And there's some interest to study the effects of blue light on aging and its effects on collagen. I think that's really exciting too and i think that's where a tinted mineral sunscreen can potentially add benefits again we don't really know for sure but using it every single day especially when we're all in front of our computer screens in front of our phones exposed to all this blue light and you know fluorescent lights and things like that it's just i think it's at least prudent that's my favorite word on this channel but i think it's you know I ideal to use these ingredients at our disposal because the, i mean there's evidence to suggest that there is, is a correlation with protective benefits so i think that you know if we can use these ingredients and they're freely available Available and they're relatively inexpensive, then I think that's ideal. Also, what got me. Oh, <laughs> I have a motorcycle. What happened to you? It's literally like a motorcycle thing. Are you. <laughs> no. This is. Ugh, I have a motorcycle gang in this video and it's like creating background noise. I live in New York City, so I, I, invariably there's gonna be road noise that just passes by. They're not, they're like people on ATVs. What are ATVs? Like the four wheel phone, and they're doing like wheelies. This is crazy. You should just come here. Ugh. Hold on. Okay, I went to go see the motorcycles, and they were all gone. Anyway, what I was saying is, what attracted me to this sunscreen? It's actually marketed as a mineral lotion, a non-greasy mineral lotion. The one thing that I really liked was the price point. It's similar in price to the CeraVe tinted mineral sunscreen, which I also reviewed on this channel. You can check that out. You can check that out in the description box, the, a link to that video, as well as a link in the card above. But yeah, I think on Amazon right now, it's $13.99, $13.99 US dollars. So it's fairly inexpensive for a three fluid ounce bottle of tinted mineral sunscreens. Tinted mineral sunscreens, how many times can I say that? They tend to be fairly pricey in, compared to, in comparison with the non-tinted mineral sunscreen counterparts. But yeah, I actually asked for this for Christmas last year and I got it. It was, a, it was like a stocking stuffer, but this is my second bottle since Christmas of 2019. And I haven't used it up yet, but I am using it up despite my thoughts about it, which I will get into later in this video. Also, what I love is that it contains mostly natural ingredients like shea butter. I love shea butter. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for people who have oily skin or acne prone skin, definitely because it is very oily, but it's also very moisturizing 
there's an ingredient that has antioxidant benefits that may potentially help improve aging, improve fine lines, and really fill in the gaps and really provide a good emollient moisturizing effect. Shea butter is also a good occlusive agent, so it helps to just sort of trap water in the skin and prevent it from evaporating, which is called transepidermal water loss, and that's a very important hot topic in dermatology, especially cosmetic dermatology, and even clinical dermatology in regard to skin disorders like dermatitis, atopic dermatitis, um, things that result in dry, patchy, itchy skin. You know, you definitely want to keep those areas moist. I'm not a medical doctor, by the way, and this isn't medical advice, so there is a disclaimer in the description box. Now, I'm going to swatch this on my skin but so you can just see what it looks like on pale, bare skin. And a guy's skin, too, I think that's a good perspective because a lot of guys are afraid to use tinted mineral sunscreen just because it may look like makeup, and I totally get that, so I just want you to see what it looks like on my skin and just sort of, sort of how I, I deal with that. But before I get into a swatch, Watching it, I just wanted to go over the ingredients in here. Like I said, it has ingredients, extract ingredients, botanical extract ingredients that have antioxidant potential that have been shown in studies to have antioxidant potential. So for example, it has eucalyptus leaf extract. Eucalyptus leaf extract does possess antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. So potentially it may be helpful for the skin, especially potentially, again, skin disorders that are driven by bacteria, but we don't really have a lot of research or studies to really conclusively say that eucalyptus leaf extract will definitely help your acne or help your or help with aging necessarily but this extract this botanical extract is also a good source of antioxidants it's debatable as to whether or not these antioxidants are stable or whether or not they can penetrate the skin and really have a biological effect that really that help to scavenge free radicals free radicals and oxidation drive the aging process and those are driven in part by majorly in part by uv radiation from the sun so we don't really know if the antioxidants in botanical extracts are really doing anything but there's th there doesn't seem to be like any big harm including them unless they're you know highly vol volatile like fragrance compounds or, or extracts you know like a lavender oil extract or something like that or peppermint oil extract you definitely don't want to be putting that on your skin and there's also glycerin glycerin is a natural humectant it's derived from plants it's it really helps to draw water into the skin and from our environment as well as from just your your own skin it just helps to draw skin to the to the surf uh, water to the surface and then like i said it has shea butter when you get that humectant on your skin and you start attracting water onto your skin you need an occlusive agent like shea butter or or any other occlusive agent to really form a film or a layer over your skin and prevent and create a barrier so that that water doesn't evaporate and just it, it keeps your skin moister longer. Another ingredient in here is red algae extract and this is another good source of antioxidants. But again, is it stable? We we just don't know. Is it sca stable on the skin? Does it really penetrate the how many times can I say that word? Does it really seep into the skin and provide a biological effect that is beneficial for aging and hydration? It, it, it's just hard to know. There is some evidence to suggest that red algae extract may be a good UV absorber. It may offer photoprotective effects and also may be a good inhibitor of MMPs, which are matrix metalloproteinases. I talked about them before, but these are basically enzymes that are activated by UV exposure as well as other things. Just It, it may potentially inhibit these enzymes that degrade collagen and elastin. So, so potentially applying red algae extract may offer anti-aging benefits in that it helps to just sort of slow the progression of these enzymes and halt them. But again, we don't really have a, hu a sufficient amount of evidence to really conclusively say this for sure. Red algae extract is also a good source of anti-inflammatory properties. Inflammation drives aging. It drives a lot of other skin conditions. It's also high in polysaccharides and amino acids that may assist in hydrating as well as free radical scavenging. So again, the free radicals, free radicals are intrinsically associated with the aging process. Not even, not just the visible signs of aging, but also the intrinsic inner signs that, that at, at a cellular level. So, so the theory of aging is that it is driven by free radical accumulation and oxidative damage and, and other, there's other things in, that sort of play together in the, in the aging process, but it, it also contributes to the visible signs as well. And free radicals are produced by the sun, just exposure to the sun, as well as pollutants, like, like living in a city like I do, or for cigarette smoke or any, any type of smoke that you're exposed to. Even your diet can be a source of free radicals as well as a driver for free radical production. So 
Potential application of a red algae extract may potentially, again, I use that word a lot, potentially may help scavenge those free radicals and neutralize them. It's a lot more complicated than that. Free radical, free radical damage is definitely a lot more complicated than that. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, so it's, it's not as simple as it sounds. Macroalgae in particular contain pigments that can absorb UV radiation, so I'm not really sure if that's going to be relevant here because this is just an extract. You're not applying macroalgae on top of your skin the same way, so... But but it's a good thing to keep in mind. So this also has squalene. Squalene is a triterpene. Squalene is a triterpene that's the main component of the polyunsaturated lipids that are on our skin. And squalene, it shows some benefits as a as an emollient, as well as an antioxidant. It also contains stearic acid. It's a fatty acid found in the skin epidermis, the human epidermis. Stearic acid is decreased in aged skin by approximately 31% compared with younger skin. So it's interesting to note that it does top application of stearic acid provide a replenishment of the stearic acid and that possibly may help with sort of emollient and hydration effects as well as maybe anti-aging effects. So the final botanical extract it has in here that I see is kakudu plum extract and I actually have never heard of this extract but apparently there may be some benefit with this in skin brightening as well as collagen production because it is apparently loaded with vitamin C. Vitamin C is an antioxidant. You've probably definitely <laughs> heard of it. You probably use a vitamin C serum, but it's a powerful antioxidant that may protect against free radical damage as well as UV exposure. I just don't know how stable it is. It has to really be formulated properly to be stable and to really get into your skin and really have impart a, an effect that's relevant to its claims, that its research claims as well as its marketing claims. But yeah, I, there's just not a lot of research on kakudu plum extract that I've seen, so I can't really tell you for sure if it's going to provide much of a benefit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to my face. I I guess I might as well just apply it to my whole face. The good thing about tinted mineral sunscreens, let me just get it on my hand first. In comparison to chemical sunscreens, and I mentioned this in my CeraVe tinted mineral sunscreen vlog, I didn't get enough on my face. It really provides a good visual aspect of where of what you're covering because chemical sunscreens, they go on clear so you can't really see if you're getting all areas of your face. When you put on tinted mineral sunscreen on it provides a good marker of whether or not you have skip areas where you miss because people generally there's studies showing this that most people who apply sunscreen don't apply enough and they have skip areas on their face and they're not getting to the SPF on the label and they're not getting adequate protection even though they're using it so I like tinted mineral sunscreens because it provides a good visualization of where your skip areas are so you can adjust and then get the adequate protection that you need okay so here is the visual aspect. This is what it looks like in comparison to, so this is what it looks like in comparison to my natural skin. It's similar in appearance to the, to the Elta MD, I think. But yeah, so you see my natural skin here. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it. Actually, I like the color better than even the CeraVe tinted mineral sunscreen. I say even, but like, personally, I do like the Elta MD better. Actually, I don't know if I have enough to cover my whole face. Ugh. I do the dot method like pretty much everyone basically get my allergic shiners that i have underneath my eye okay so i didn't get my neck but <laughs> you can definitely you, you can definitely tell that i have something on my face whether it's makeup or like a bb cream or something like that i mean it definitely, it reduces redness. It makes my skin look flawless, doesn't it? And I haven't really let it dry down yet. So you're definitely seeing probably a shinier appearance than I than you would after about 15 minutes worth of application. It's marketed as non-greasy and it kind of grows. I mean, the shea butter is going to provide a little bit of oiliness. I mean, it's just going to. But the one thing that is surprising about this product is that it definitely does dry down matte. At least it does for me. And that's what I don't like about this product. Uh, for people with oily skin, you may love it. But for me, I tend to have skin on the drier side and sunscreens or any sort of application or any sort of like topical products that 
I apply that dry me out like um, the Biore UV sunscreen for example the Japanese sunscreen I think that's Japanese things that dry me out just doesn't it doesn't work for me it makes it doesn't really work for my skin and its appearance I don't really like that at all yeah it, it is for some reason it is drying for me but like in this lighting it looks really shiny doesn't it <laughs> it looks really shiny now it's starting to dry down a little bit this sunscreen the Australian gold botanical SPF 50 tinted mineral sunscreen I prefer this color over the Sarah V. The Sarah V is darker. It's a little bit more orange, orangey for my pale skin. Again, I'm like Fitzpatrick type one or two. I can tan and burn at the same time. So I can get a sunburn. I can also get a tan, but this sort of blends in for into my natural. It gives me a little bit of color. It blends in a lot better than the Sarah V. But again, for me, for my skin type, it does dry down matte and it does get dry. And I just personally, I don't like it. But again, if you're oily, you may prefer it. Like I said, it goes on a little bit a little bit greasy, I, I think, just because I think it's probably the, the shea butter. The shea butter is pretty high up on the list. If I were to compare this to another tinted mineral sunscreen, the Elta MD, I really like a lot. It's a lot lower. It's like an SPF 41, I think, and this is an SPF 50. So it's it's lower on the SPF scale and it has similar ingredients, but the, tilt, the tinted mineral sunscreen by Elta MD is, for me, for my skin, more moisturizing. It doesn't dry down as matte as this one does. The only issue is I get more bang for my buck with this, the Australian gold. Again, it's like $14 for three ounces. And I think the Elta MD is like $33 or $36. It's definitely a lot more affordable. I think that if you're in a pinch and you don't mind it drying down, maybe it won't dry down for you. Maybe your skin's different. Everybody's skin is different. So, you know, maybe it will work for you. I say definitely try it. It's inexpensive enough that you might as well try it and see if you like it. And in the summer, I actually was using this on my body just to give myself a sort of sun-kissed glow, if you will, because I'm pretty pale and I thought that, you know, maybe it'll just make me look like I've been out surfing or something, something that I would never really do in real life. So it's been on for about like six or seven minutes or maybe close to 10 minutes. I can already feel it drying down a little bit. I don't know, do you think it looks oily? What do you think? Do you think it looks shiny? I'm okay with the oiliness. I'm okay with the shininess. The fact that, the thing that I don't like is just whenever it dries down later on in the day. And I may use more often whenever I go to, whenever I go to Houston, Houston's a very humid climate. Climate, I may use it there exclusively. I may use it just in humid climates exclusively and not just like in the bitter cold winter of, you know, New York or the Northeast where, I, where I'm at currently. And I may buy it again also just for my body to use as a body sunscreen. Again, for the summer, whenever it's more humid and I don't have to really worry too much about a drying matte sunscreen. If you can see the visual, I think you should just, if you like what you see, <laughs> you, can, you can definitely try it for yourself and see if it also works for you. I don't know if it, I'm not sure how it works with makeup, you know, if you wanna put it under makeup or you could probably just use it as a foundation. And for guys, I don't think you really have to worry about it look like, looking like makeup, especially if you are just using it to go outside and be outdoors and things like that. Well, thank you for joining me in this skincare vlog and this sunscreen review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you more information information about how it looks on my skin, on fair skin, and just sort of the overall ingredient profile and the research behind it. I think it's a very promising sunscreen. I think I really like the ingredients. I really like the, the color, the tint. The only thing, again, I don't like is just that the fact that for me, for my skin type, it is a little drying. So that's, that, that that's my two cents. Take it for what it's worth. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. Comment down below if you've tried this sunscreen or if you have any other tinted sunscreen options that you want me to review on this channel. And definitely subscribe as well. I'd love for you to join this community so we can learn from each other. This is just a, I, I feel like skincare is something that we can just all, it's a continual process and we all learn from each other. And I would love for, to hear your input and to connect with you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.